a dissertation of the day. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, just to follow the uh, regular uh, procedures that uh, I will ask uh, Faisal to make a presentation, you know, yeah, maybe 30, 40 minutes, you know, as a PhD dissertation, a little bit longer will be fine. Then uh, before that, you know, uh, I hope uh, Faisal can uh, just uh, briefly introduce uh, himself and also his uh, achievements uh, during the study and other experiences gained. And, uh, and then after his uh, presentation, then I will ask committee members to uh, uh, ask the questions, you know, uh, one by one. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, Faisal, uh, just uh, hand that uh, to you, then you can make a presentation, start your presentation now, yeah. All right, thank you, Professor Liu. I will share my screen. Oh. Okay. The post disabled participant share screen. Oh, you haven't added me to share my screen. And oh, okay, sorry. So I need to add. <clears throat> yeah. Add another. One. Yeah. Add another one. Uh, let me see how. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I already granted. Yeah. 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 So can you see my screen? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just wanted to test out the cursor first, the the mouse. Uh, wait a sec. All right. Is it moving? Yes. Cursor. Moving. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah. Okay. The cursor is moving. Good. All right. Um. I will start briefly by having some introduction about myself and then followed by the um, presentation. So okay. good morning, committee members, Professor Charchen Liu, Dr. Wu Cheng Chi, Dr. Owen Huang, Dr. Ye Ching, and my advisor, Dr. Andrew Chan Sun Lin. Thank you for allocating your time despite the busy schedule. Uh, my name is Faisal Gantara. I am an Indonesian PhD candidate um, from Taiwan International Graduate Program, as well as Institute from as well as from Institute of Geophysics National Central University. My advisor is Dr. Andrew Tian Sun Lin, and I am here this morning representing the sedimentology and basin research group of NCU. So a little bit background of myself as requested by Professor Liu. So I was born and raised in Indonesia. Uh, what else? Um, <laughs> 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 and then um, prior to my PhD uh, study, I used to work in the petroleum industry for five years. And um, growing up, I, I also, um, I have been living in America before um, when I was a kid and also when I was working. And um, um, the main reasons why I choose Taiwan for my PhD um, study is because initially I wanted to learn more about the gas hydrant explorations. Um, understanding the unconventional petroleum system has always been one of my major interests. And then along the way, I expanded my interest into also understanding the strategic development um, in southwestern offshore Taiwan. And then some of my achievements that I have accomplished over the past few years, um, I have published two publications. Um, I, I, they are from chapter four and chapter five. In fact, those first, uh, they are the first two chapters that I worked on. So in terms of sequence is chapter two, three, four, five. But in terms of the work done, it's chapter four, five, four, five, two, three. So it's uh, reversed actually. So um, in my PhD, um, you will see a multiverse um, disciplines. So it's not only just concentrated in one topic. The main reasons of that is because um, there has been a shift in, in terms of a topic. So um, after finishing my first uh, two publications, um, due to the lack of uh, gas hydrant exploration well, so I need to shift into um, a more relevant and also something that I can accomplish um, in a good way. And then uh, that is why I shifted to chapter two and chapter three as uh, depicted in my dissertation. So I guess that's um, a brief introduction of me. So um, can I start now? Good, thank you. Yeah, you okay. can, yeah. Okay. Mm 
The sequence of my work is described as follow. First, I will briefly discuss the introductions and the motivation of the work, including the research scopes and why this work matters in chapter one. Following that are the four major topics in my research, including seismic reprocessing and imaging of two legacy MCS data in chapter two, stratigraphy study from the roofgate margin to the opportunity wedge in chapter three, gas hydrate study and volumetric estimations in the lower Fangio basin in chapter four, and the thermal anomaly study from the same basin in chapter five. And by the end of the talk, I will summarize the work with concluding remarks. So let's start with chapter one, Exordium. The South China Sea is one of the marginal basins in the Western Pacific regions. It opens in early Oligocene and ceased by spreading in the middle Miocene. The opening has been postulated as a response to many geological factors, such as the tectonic extrusions from the Indian and the Eurasian convergence. In the northern tip of the South China Sea, the Taiwan origin marks the full episode of Wilson cycle, where it closes the South China Sea. A series of rifted basins developed to the northern part of the South China Sea, as well as the southern part. The Taiwan origin developed as a consequence of the Eurasian lithosphere colliding with the Luzon arc of the Philippine Sea Plate since 6.5 million years ago. The collision moves southward at the rate of 82 millimeter per year. The double convergence of uh, manifests as the Manila subduction system, where the oceanic crust of the Eurasian plate, including the South China Sea, um, is being consumed um, underneath or beneath the Philippine Sea plate. To the north, there is the Riku subduction system, where the Philippine Sea plate is subducting below the Eurasian plate. Five geological units are recognized from west to east. They are the coastal plain, the western foothills, the Suosan Ranges, the Backbone Ranges, and the Coastal Ranges. The first four units, um, they belong to the upper crust and the sedimentary basins of the under-trusted Eurasian Plate, whereas the last unit belong to the accreted Luzon Arcs. Due to the obliqueness of the collision, different spatial locations in the island represent different temporal stages of the mountain building, including the subductions, the incipient collisions, the full collisions, and the post-collision. My study area is situated in the northeastern tip of the South China Sea, where the Manila subduction system evolves into a collisional system. A north, northwest, south, southeast submarine deep waterfall and thrust belts develop extensively due to the lithospheric flatter from the contractional deformation. The Manila subduction system transformed into deformation front and separated um, the erupted margin from the full and thrust belts. Morphologically speaking, the opportunity wedge slope is divided into the upper slope and the lower slope, um, separated by splay faults or out of sequence thrusts. The upper slope is dominated by Madaya piers, whereas the lower slope is dominated by the West Virgin um, full and thrust belts. Pervasive distribution of PSR have been reported in the wedge slope domain. My work can be separated into four chapters. Each of the chapter is tailored to address the challenge pertaining to each goal. In general, this, um, the study can be subdivided into the original scale topics discussing about the stratigraphy study depicted by chapter two and three versus the local scale topic focusing on the gas hydrate study described in chapter four and five. Chapter two here focuses on the seismic reprocessing and the imaging of two legacy MCS data spanning from the rifted margin to the Acrotonia wedge slope. This chapter serves as a benchmark to provide the chapter three with reliable depth migrated seismic data. In chapter three, uh, the stratigraphy information in the Northeastern South China Sea has been problematic, mainly due to the absence of drilling information. Therefore, by using the outcome of chapter two and additional time domain seismic data, chapter three aims to establish the stratigraphic development from rifted margin to the equatorial wedge. One of the major findings is in chapter three is the prevalent distributions of bottom simulating reflectors in the wedge slope, inferring the active fluid explosions and the precipitations of gas hydrates. Therefore, in chapter four, I investigated the gas hydrate system and one of the slope basins developed in the upper wedge slope, including the first order estimation of the gas volumes. 
And then um, still in the same basin, I found the anomalously lower BSR gap, which may be related to the Paleo Canyon deposition in the basins, and this will be the focus of chapter five. The organization of my dissertation is described as follow. Chapter two, reprocess 2D MCS seismic lines as shown by the blue line colors. Chapter three incorporates the result of chapter two plus additional time domain seismic data shown by the red colored lines. Regional scale topics spans from the rift kit margin to the accretionary wedge slope. And then move on to the local uh, scale topic. Chapter four and five is concentrated in the upper slope domain shown by the white color box and to the right is the zoomed version of the box. In chapter four, the area is situated in the lower Fangyo Basin depicted by the pink shaded box where it is bounded by mud diapiric structural hives. In chapter five, um, it's covering the same area as chapter four plus two additional 2D seismic data uh, depicted in the blue colored lines in the inset figures. Major canyons in this chapter includes Kaoping Canyon and Fangyo Canyon. Now on to chapter two, where I will be discussing about the reprocessing and the imaging effort of two MGL data. Um, for this chapter, um, my advisor and I, we are currently submitting the manuscript in the exploration geophysics. Understanding the subsurface imaging and condition in offshore southwestern Taiwan requires a careful seismic processing workflow. Therefore, chapter two aims to provide depth migrated seismic data for the later chapter three. The data spans approximately 200 and 250 kilometers for MGL 10 and MGL 27 respectively, with the acquisition information is listed here, giving a maximum full coverage of 59. The simplified seismic processing workflow is described as follow. First is preconditioning, where I applied filters to eliminate coherent and incoherent acquisition related noises, followed by the convolutions to collapse source wave flat, uh, bubble ghost, and short period multiples. The third step is the velocity analysis, where I pick the velocity semblance to derive RMS velocity, followed by NMO corrections to remove NMO times of, of each uh, reflection hyperbole. And next is the multiple to attenuate the multiple's energy based on the periodicity and the move out. Um, aside from the convolutions, I also applied uh, wave equation multiple attenuation or known as WEMA, and then surface related multiple attenuation uh, known as SRMA, radon filter and FK filter. The sixth is the stacking, uh, which is basically collapsing the seismic traces into a single trace, and then followed by both time migration and depth migration to move the um, reflection events to their true uh, reflection point in time, uh, depth, and space. Now I'm going to show some of the key results. After I finish the preconditioning step, I verify the quality by stacking under water velocity. These two figures exhibit the Bruce stack with distinct views of the um, C4 multiples, both in MGL10 on the left and MGL27 on the right. From there, I applied the convolutions to enhance the temporal re resolutions by collapsing the source wavelet. The upper uh, left figure shows the autocorrelations before and after decon, where reverberations were partially suppressed. In CDP Gather on the right, um, the convolution improved the spatial resolutions as depicted by the, um, the dark blue arrows. The sequence of the multiples were utilized based on the most effective sequence combinations. The improvement after uh, each demultiple processes is shown by the dark uh, blue arrows. So in A, I have the um, CDB gather before the convolutions, B is after the convolution, C is after WEMA, D is after SRMA, and E after radon filter, followed by F is after FK filter. Uh, the improvement of each multiple techniques is shown by the blue arrows. And then while each of the methods shows improvement in eliminating the noises, 
um, WEMA and SRMA labeled C and D shows the least improvement. This is the demultiple results for MGL10. In MGL27, I applied the same sequence of the demultiple processes. Again, um, the method exhibit major improvement except for WEMA and SRMA with the least amount of improvement shown in the label C and D. In every step of the multiples, I did velocity refinement. This figure shows you the first um, velocity refinement after the convolution, which is the first step of the multiple shown in a figure A and C for uh, MGL10 and 27 respectively, versus the one after FK filter, uh, which is the last step of uh, the multiple shown in a figure B and D for MGL10 and 27 respectively. Um, in the last stage of the multiple, the primary velocity semblances are now easier to recognize and pick as opposed to um, the first stages of the demultiples. The second velocity is then built by converting the RMS velocity through Dick's equation. A smooth version of second velocity was um, performed by applying a weight scale to smooth the data. The interval velocity was then derived from the smooth stacking velocity based on the constrained velocity inversion, which is an extended version of Dick's equation. The interval velocity were then used to migrate the seismic data into depth um, domain. The result of post tag depth migration in MGL10 is shown as follow. The seismic line extends from the rifted margin to the accretionary wedge slope, residual energy of multiples, are mainly present uh, underneath the accretionary uh, wedge. Similarly, the post tag depth migration of MGL27 shows the residual energy of the multiples, both in the uh, upper, uh, in the upper and the lower slope domain. While a number of various new multiple methods has been tested to cope different um, multiple targets. However, each demultiple method is limited um, to a certain um, boundary condition, such as the assumption of laterally invariant medium in the convolution, which does not satisfy the study area because we are talking about the fault thrust belts. And then the survey line complexities, um, also the only usage of first order multiple model predictions in um, WEMA and SRMA, and then including also the steep dips of the orogeny, uh, which may affect the parabolic move out as well as the presence of localized um, velocity anomaly, uh, such as hydrates that may contribute to the overlapping um, move out between um, primaries and multiples. And that is the end of chapter two. The outcome of this chapter will be used in chapter three to uh, describe the stratigraphy um, history. All right, now moving on to chapter three, where I will be discussing about the stratigraphic development in the northeastern um, South China Sea from rifted margin to the submarine um, Taiwan accretionary wedge. So for this chapter, because this is the last chapter that I'm working on, um, in terms of manuscript, um, my advisor and I, we are still preparing. Understanding stratigraphy development in deep water settings is of paramount importance in the regional geology evolutions of marginal seas, such as the South China Sea. In southwestern Taiwan, um, the absence of drilling has hampered the stratigraphy understanding in the area. Um, therefore, in this chapter, I am aiming to describe the stratigraphic um, development by extending the key horizons defined by Liao et al. in 2016 and introduce two newly defined um, key horizons. Seismic facies and stratigraphy interpretation were utilized to derive the stratigraphic history of the area. And the data that I'm using here are the output of chapter two, MGL 10 and 20, with two additional time domain data, MGL 5 and MGL, uh, sorry, the, the, previous, uh, the previous data output from chapter two is MGL 10 and MGL 27 not 20. And then the two additional data that I'm using uh, here is MGL5 and 20, processed by the uh, UTIG.
The work of Liao et al. in 2016 has introduced um, six stratigraphy horizons as shown on the figure on the right. Here, however, I only adopted four strata based, um, based on their work, the base of the Pleistocene, the base of Pliocene, Middle Miocene MFS, maximum flooding surface, and reef onset of uh, unconformity. In their work, the breakup unconformity marks the boundary between early Miocene and late Oligocene. However, according to Lin et al. in 2003, the breakup ceased around 30 million years ago, which is around early Oligocene, um, which means the breakup unconformity does not necessarily define the Oligocene and Miocene boundary. Therefore, uh, two newly defined um, base of the Miocene and breakup unconformity are redefined in this work, adopting the work by Lin et al. in 2021 and Lee et al. in 2015. In this study, I classified 11 seismic facies based on the amplitude, frequency, and phase. They are depicted as follow. So in facies A, we have the um, wavy reflections depicting the sediment waves. In facies B, showing the fairly continuous reflector inferring the hemiplegic sediments. Facies C um, shows the contorted semi-chaotic reflector suggesting the MTD or mass transport deposits or some submarine landslide. Facious D shows the semi-oblique internal reflectors um, sandwiched by apparent top lap and down lap terminations. And it, I interpret this as the sediment, uh, as the series of laterally migrating channels. And then Facious E shows the high amplitude uh, reflector packages known as harps inferring the turbulent sense. Facious F shows the cone shape of high amplitude uh, show, uh, suggesting the buried uh, seamounts or buried volcanoes. Facius G shows the low continuity, high amplitude reflectors depicting the volcanic seals. And for, for Facius H, I interpret it as the submarine canyons uh, shown by the U-shaped cut and fill reflectors. Facius I shows the triangular shaped wedge of low to moderate amplitude reflections, uh, suggesting the cinder deposition. Facius J shows the disorganized reflectors uh, depicting acoustic basement. And finally, Facius K shows the reflection free dome shaped configurations um, inferring mud diapirs. Spanning from the northwest to southeast direction. So it's from here to here. Here is the uh, stratigraphic correlations from seismic facies interpretations in MGL5. So to your left is the south, uh, the northwest, and to your right is the southeast. So here, the cinder sediments are sandwiched by RU and VU. In early uh, Miocene sediments, uh, we have the dominations of um, hemiplegic sediments and volcanic seals. And then in middle Miocene sediments, so shows the extensive development of carps and lateral channel migrations and paleo channel, um, perhaps related to the paleo uh, Formosa Canyon activity. And then in Pliocene, in Pliocene is the most um, calm period with the relatively homogeneous uh, hemipelagic sediments. It is not until in Pleistocene when we see the development of MTD, carps, and um, sediment waves. The stratigraphic correlations and seismic facies in MGL20 is shown as follows. So it is situated uh, just parallel to MGL5 to the east. Again, the Sindrift sediments are sandwiched by ROU and BU. In early Miocene sediments, it is dominated by the hemiplegic harps and volcanic seals. In middle Miocene sediments shows the extensive development of harps and lateral channel migration. Interesting fact here is shown by the inset D where the presence of mid myosin MTD and hemiplegic pliocene are flanking the monocline developed from the differential compaction governed by the underlying grubbins. Uh, and then in Pleistocene, um, it is marked by the development of MTD, harps, and sediment waves, just like the previous interpretation. All right. Here is the stratigraphic correlations and seismic interpretation in MGL10. So now we are 
uh, crossing the rifted margin as well as the lower quaternary wedge slope. So it is spanning from southwest to northeast. To your left is the uh, southwest direction, and to your right is the northeast direction. Uh, the seismic facies interpretation trends um, is pretty much the same, just like the previous two seismic lines, and they are extendable here. The inside figure shows the lower wedge slope domain where presence of BSRs shown by these uh, white lines uh, is pervasive, indicating active fluid expulsion, such as gas hydrates. From the kinematic perspective, this line shows the narrower uh, fold spacing as opposed to um, the one that I'm going to show you after this. So we, we will make some comparison afterward. So here is the stratigraphic correlation and the seismic facies interpretations for MGL 27 um, as depicted as follow. Um, similar to the facies interpretation in the previous line, the wedge slope domain, um, in the wedge slope domain, uh, we have the presence of VSR um, indicating active fluid explosions. And then constrained by the work of Chu et al. in the 2021, we interpreted the decrement depth is estimated around 12 to 13 kilometer with an average dip between four to six degrees. So, and then um, as I have promised before from kinematic perspective, this, this is the southern slope, the southern lower slope. Uh, it shows a wider fault spacing as opposed to the northern one. Here I postulated that these two behavior could be related to the different state in the core pressure in the lower slope because it's close to the shelf. Um, it is perhaps more influenced by the erosions by the canyon instead of the deposition of the canyon. Therefore, the um, sedimentation, sedimentation rate is slightly lower there. Therefore, also the lower pore pressure and hence the stronger shear strength and the narrower fold spacing. Conversely, in the southern slope, the pore pressure is higher, leading to the weaker shear strength and the wider fold space spacing. Um, the high pore pressure is also supported by the intrusions of the mud pier in, the, in this uh, Kalping Canyon, uh, despite located in the lower slope, not in the upper slope, suggesting the interplay between the uh, high sedimentation rate versus the contractional deformation. So based on the seismic stratigraphy and the facies interpretation before, here I propose the chronostratigraphy column from the deep water rifted margin to offshore southwestern Taiwan uh, full thrust belts. So in an early Paleogene to early Oligocene, we have the rifting of the South China Sea with the deposition of associated thin rift uh, strata. The opening of South China Sea takes place in early Oligocene to early Miocene with the deposition of uh, shallow marine sediments. And then during the post break up, um, we have the extrusions of the volcanic events suggested by the emplacement of the magmatic seals within the late uh, Oligocene to early Miocene units. Harps extensively developed in um, Miocene, followed by the U shaped uh, cut and fill Paleo Canyons associated with the acti Paleo activity of the Formosa Canyon and Penghu Canyon. Um, together with their um, associated lateral migrations, they are present in the middle Miocene and the Pleistocene. MTD and sediment waves develop pervasively in the Pleistocene. And then it is not until in late Miocene where we have the um, Taiwan orogeny takes place. Uh, and then we have the development of slow basins and mud day piers. That is the outcome of chapter three. The pervasive development of the BSR in the slope domain will be the motivation for chapter four, the next chapter. Now let's, let's switch gear onto the local um, topic, chapter four, where I will be discussing about the gas hydrate systems and the volumetric um, calculations in the lower Pangyo Basin. Oops, a uh, little bit background about the chapter four. Uh, my advisor and I, with the other co-authors, we have um, published this uh, work in the Journal of Petroleum Geology in 2020. The gas hydrate project in Taiwan was established in 2003 through multiple um, exploration phases, 
In, in 2016, the project concluded, leaving to 18 proposed drilling sites within uh, 12 uh, field prospects. And one of the prospects is the Lower Fangio Basin. As mentioned in chapter three, widely distributed BSR have been recognized in the lower and the upper wedge slopes. The BSR are known to mark the gas hydro stability zone. And, excuse me. And in this chapter, I am aiming to explore the gas hydro systems um, in the upper near west slope and use the lower Fangio basin as the example. The data that I'm using here are the 3D MCS 937s and the 2D MGL 0905 TSD. Both were processed by IONTU. The upper right figure shows the lower Fangio basins in the pink square, whereas the lower bottom figure shows the 3D uh, view of the basins, uh, where we have the presence of the BSR, uh, are omnipresent, shown by the, the gray uh, layer, even cutting through the Madai piers shown in the pink bluish color. Similar to chapter three, here I classify five seismic facies based, the, based on the amplitude, frequency, and phase as depicted by facies A for hemiplegic sediments, uh, facies B for MTD, facies C for cut and fills turbulent sands, facies D for overbanking sediments, and facies E for mud that appears. This is the seismic interpretation results of MGL 0908 TSD. Owing to the impedance contrast, the, uh, the presence of BSR uh, is indicated by the reverse polarity reflections, which mimic the seafloor and, uh, and also cut across the stratigraphy as well as the diaperic ridges. Blanking zones above BSR are attributed to the reduction uh, of the porosity due to low to modest gas hydrosaturation as shown in the red square inset. And then hemiplegic sediments, MTD, and stacking channels dominate the shallower part. From the interpretations, I propose that a geological model where upward um, promotions of the deep-seated thermogenic gas may went up uh, through collapse uh, anticline and fault-induced diapir. Later on, the gas migrates um, upward toward the high porosity um, turbidate sands and can be preserved as a gas hydrate if it's above BSR or as a free gas if it's below BSR. And then we can also see the progressive unconformities are present hinting the dynamics of the uh, Madai piers uh, with respect to the sedimentations in the intraslope basin through time. In MCS 79, I observed the possible presence of gas hydrate inferred from the enhanced positive amplitude um, above VSR shown by the red uh, rectangular box and a possible um, free gas inferred from the enhanced reversal reflections below VSR. Uh, possible faults are also observable. Here, the mud draping sand is present indicating that the sediment, uh, the mud day pier is a good stratigraphic trap due to its low um, permeability. In MCS 18, localized mud diapir was seen in the center of the basin. Enhanced reflections with reverse polarity flanking the mud diapir, um, shown in the red box color, infer the, po uh, the possible free gas even above BSR. This phenomena can be explained by two factors. Uh, first, um, it could be that there is an, ex an excessive amount of gas uh, with limited uh, water formation. Therefore, the presence of free gas is more prevalent and more obvious than the gas hydrates. Um, or two, perhaps the high thermal conductivity of the mud diapirs act as the um, dewatering catalyst for the previously preserved gas hydrates. And then by using seismic attribute, I can further delineate uh, the extension of gas hydrate and associated free gas as shown on the left figure. Based on these seismic interpretations, I then categorize uh, the compartments or the, 
the gas hydrate play into um, three different area, which are the gas hydrates above BSR, the free gas above BSR, and then the free gas below BSR. To calculate the volumetric of the gas, I adopted the similar formula from the conventional petroleum industry as depicted in equation 4.1 and 4.2. OGHIP is uh, original gas hydrate in place, and then uh, OFGIP is original free gas in place. Due to the absence of exploration well, I used the petrophysical parameters from published references uh, within the vicinity uh, as shown in this table. Monte Carlo simulation was then utilized to derive probabilistic um, first order estimation of the volumetric, giving a total volume of two, around 2 billion cubic feet within an area of uh, 60 square kilometer. And that is the end of chapter four. And with regards to the BSR informations, uh, especially the depth informations from this chapter, I will use that um, as the uh, starting point in my chapter five after this. Going further, now moving on to chapter five, where I will be discussing about the role of paleocalpin canyon on the present day thermal blanketing effect in the lower Paleo basins. So this work has been published in the Marine Geophysical Research in 2020. Following chapter four, I further expanded my investigation in the lower Paleo basins by comparing the basin's BSR depth with the background in the accretionary wedge slope. As you can see here on the right, the BSR depth is uh, in the lower Fangio basins in this um, black square is relatively deeper as opposed to the original background in the upper slope. In theory, as we approach the origin, the thermal gradient should increase, hence the um, shallowing uh, BSR depth. However, this does not happen in the lower Fangio basin. Since BSR is more sensitive to um, temperature than pressure, the BSR depth can be used as a proxy to understand the current thermal signatures of the basin. The data that I'm using here are the same as the before. So I'm using still the 3D MCS 937 um, data to calculate the uh, BSR depth. And then also additional 2D uh, MCS data, MW900601 and 02. And then to constrain the BSR depth, I, uh, we also incorporated um, direct thermal measurements using thermal probes and the thermal imaging data. As for the direct thermal measurements, this study uses two types of sensors. First is a four uh, thermal probes mounted on a 14 meter long core in every four meters. And then um, the second is the thermal camera to measure the thermal properties based on the thermal infrared. On the left is the results of the BSR depth comparisons between this uh, seismic measurement uh, versus the thermal measurement. As for the thermal measurements, um, they are shown by the triangle symbol here, 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 and then here. Uh, the triangle symbols is for the thermal probes data, whereas the hexagonal symbols they are for the thermal camera data. The number above the symbol shows their respective measurement values. Here, the BSR depth from the seismic shows rel relatively deeper depth to that of from the thermal measurement. On the other hand, cross plot between C4 water depths versus uh, BSR sub-bottom depths, both in the Aquatinary West Slope on the right, figure um, shows that the heat flow of the lower Fangio Basin lies between around 20 to 70 milliwatts uh, per square meter. Comparison between geothermal gradient and heat flow from seismic data uh, versus um, thermal measurements are shown here. So on the left, we have the average geothermal gradient um, from BSR shows around 33 Celsius per kilometer versus the 55 Celsius per kilometers from direct thermal measurement. And then on the right, the average heat flow from the BSR shows 
uh, a lower value, which is uh, 41 uh, milliwatts per square meter versus 62 um, milliwatts per square meters from the average value from the direct thermal measurement. I deduced that the discrepancies between both measurements are related to the shallow heat flux, where shallow gra uh, geothermal gradients elevate locally as the fluid migrates upward. Based on the results, the lower Fangio basins has experienced the thermal blanketing phenomenon, where cold and low thermal um, gradient sediments overlies and insulate the background thermal properties of the sediment. Significant reduction um, of the uh, basin temperature is commonly caused by a rapid uh, sedimentation rate, um, as inferred by many references, whereas in the southwestern offshore Taiwan, um, it experiences high sedimentation rate around 0 0.7 to 4.5 millimeter per year. <clears throat> to test this hypothesis, I used three seismic data to show the presence of inferred cut and fill spacious shown by the gray shaded uh, polygon here, here, and here suggesting the uh, deposition of Paleo Capin Canyon in the past. Um, and the cut and fill facies here are interpreted as the remnant deposition of the canyon. To understand the interplay between the position of Paleo Capin Canyon with the present day thermal signatures in the lower Fangio Basin, I propose a schematic evolution of the basin as follow. So in chapter three, uh, I learned that during late Miocene, Paleo Southwest offshore Taiwan was, uh, was on a post breakup um, under the deep water settings, where mainly uh, we have the development of heavy pelagic sediments along the rifted margin. And then around early Pliocene, we have the submarine ridges uh, in the upper slope of the Akratunir wedge initiated as the thrust related anticlines. It is not until in the, during um, late. Pliocene, where we have the development um, of nascent um, Taiwan orogeny, and it was uh, intensively accreted. And then Paleo Capping Canyon developed flowing through the lower, the proto lower Fangio Basin, together with the rapid sedimentation in the southwestern offshore Taiwan. And then, due to the insufficient um, dewatering process, high water saturation within the pore space overpressured the sediment. And then, the trap pore waters leads to the lowered. Um, sediment thermal conductivities. The rapid sediment burial uh, results in the insufficient time to adapt uh, to the heat flow regimes at the background. And then these together leads to the lower heat flows and the thermal gradients uh, in the shallow sediment section known as the thermal blanketing effect. And then finally, in late Pleistocene, um, further might they appear intrusions and uplifting of the um, seafloor had blocked the course of the Paleo Capping Canyon. The lower Fangio Basin was abundant following the, um, following the canyon curse shifted to the west along the present day uh, Capping Canyon curse. The thermal blanketing effect contributes to the deepened um, base of the guest hydrate stability zones, hence the deeper BSR depth. Now moving on to chapter six, which is conclusion. The offshore Southwestern Taiwan offers various challenges related to the comprehension, comprehension of um, subsurface imaging, uh, stratigraphic uh, history and development, guest hydro systems, and associated thermal signatures. In chapter two, I have reprocessed two legacy MCL data in a depth migrated sections. And then from that chapter, I found that the success of each reprocessing stage depends on the trial and error to find the correct parameters to achieve the goal of the associated um, processing stage. In chapter three, a new interpretation of uh, Cenozoic stratigraphic redevelopment in the rifted northern um, China, uh, China, Chinese uh, rifted margin uh, of the South China Sea near Taiwan to the Taiwan uh, full and thrust belts is proposed using um, seismic stratigraphic correlations and the seismic uh, facies interpretation. In chapter four, the gas hydrate systems and the first order volumetric estimations in the lower Fangio Basin was proposed. 
um, giving a total volume around 2,000 BCF billion cubic feet over an area of 60 square meter. And then finally, in chapter five, the thermal signature of the lower Fangyao Basin is most likely associated with the thermal, blanket, thermal blanketing phenomenon from the rapid depositions of the Paleo Kaping Canyon, which once flowing through the lower Fangyao Basins before the Madai Peak uh, intrusion shifted the course of the canyon. That's the end of my talk and thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, yeah, for your uh, good presentation. Uh, then the next, uh, we will start uh, to ask uh, committee members uh, one by one, ask the questions. I think it's probably easier just, uh, you know, for one member, one committee members ask question, then uh, Faisal just to respond to that, and then we move to the next. I think, uh, you know, yeah, for the order of, uh, uh, members to ask questions. I, I would like to ask Wu Chen first, then Professor Huang uh, will be next, and then uh, Professor Ye will be next. Uh, the last will be, uh, well, not not the last, just uh, the fourth one will be Professor Lin, your supervisor. And then finally, I will make my comments. Then, then of course, if uh, committee me other committee members uh, have uh, more questions, we can go second round, third round, fourth round, whatever <laughs> if needed, okay? Yeah, okay, so uh, based on this order, then I would like to ask uh, uh, Wu Chen to, uh, uh, you know, yeah, raise your questions or comments to face off, yeah. So, uh... I, oh, I think it's a really good uh, dissertation and a uh, good presentation. Thank I only you. have a few comments. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. So first, uh, one thing that puzzles me is uh, why in your uh, let's say, uh line 27, why does it have such deep coma at uh, 12 kilometer depth? So that I think is a uh, pretty deep compared with previous study. Can you comment on that? Yeah. Um, so as for the decalment, I, by the way, um, first of all, thank you for the questions, Professor Chi. Uh, regarding the decalment depth, actually, um, it is based on, I tried to compare it to the work of Chu et al. in 2021. And uh, as you can tell from my, from my seismic sections, the resolution in the wedge slope domain is quite low, although I tried to apply AGC as well to see the continuations, but still it's quite low. And then with regards to why it is deeper, um, I would say uh, probably it has to do with the more of the sedimentations to the, as, as we go to the south. So uh, just want to clarify, you are saying that the, the 12 kilometer is not well constrained. Right. Okay. I yeah, mentioned, because, uh, yeah. Because uh, for, for 12 kilometer, it's, uh, I mean, uh, 12 kilometer is almost like a major number in that area. So that's right. why I was, uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask you. <laughs> right. But, uh, okay, now I, I understand. So may I comment, sorry, may I comment on this? Because that yes. also, he said that based on the Chio, Chio et al. 12, 20, 21, which is a Chio sin, we just, you know? Right. Chio sin, because he's a uh, uh, Yeah, 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 Chio sin. Okay. All right, so I, I see the connection now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and... Uh, the second thing is, uh, it's not very clear from the presentation. Did you do the death, death migration pre-stack or post-stack? Oh, it is all post-stack. Right, so, and uh, then uh, I think it might be for the let's say line uh, 18th, uh, you propose that you see a lot of uh, reverse parity the BSR. Right. Yeah, but uh, you never see a uh, show uh, example. Uh, for MCS 18, um, the reverse polarity of the, yeah, wait, let's go there.
like this one. Okay, it's a nice nine three seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nine three seven eighteen inline eighteen. So the BSR is I interpret it as in here. It is actually quite difficult to find the BSR, but then um, I interpret it um, to the right as a gelical matter here. Yeah, it's harder for me to see right. the, the the reverse polarity. Right. Yeah. So uh, if you have a good example, maybe you just add a small uh, small figure like uh, sublab figure on top of it. But I it's see. not. It's okay. I mean, uh, I'm just just uh, curious. And uh, when you do attribute analysis, right. uh, some of the attribute analysis result looks like uh, part of it could be uh, uh, multiple or ghosts. Can you mm -hmm. comment on that? Or you think those are all primary? Um, because I am not processing uh, the seismic data, that is a very good observation, by the way. Um, so I assume this is, um, I already get this in a stack uh, gather. So uh, I cannot really comment on whether it's a multiple or a ghost. But um, the best way to convince it is because I use a um, sweetness attribute, which is um, uh, amplitude envelope attribute. So I play around with the threshold to pick like which one is is I believe is is the gas hydrates or the free gas. So in terms of whether it's a ghost or a multiples, it is beyond the scope of my work in chapter four. Okay. All right. So that's uh. Then maybe you uh. Add a paragraph, uh, right. like, uh, yeah, so in your discussion. So right, that's right, all right. my questions. Very good. Uh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Chi. Yeah, we'll all right. Back. So, uh, Wu Chen has only a few questions, and then, okay, then uh, Professor Huang, it's your turn. It's my turn. Okay. <laughs> um, I follow up the uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Chi's uh, first question. Uh, we might go to the uh, profile uh, for MGL uh, 09527. 27, 27 yeah. in chapter three. Yeah. Actually, for this uh, uh, the profile, I have a few suggestions. Uh, mostly, it's uh, my curiosity of um, since the seismic uh, process, the seismic profile is my, my, not my uh, specialty. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, most of the question is uh, for my curiosity. Yeah. So the first, the first one is uh, for the rift, rifted uh, basement. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see the uh, there is a normal for right. right. So I understand uh, this profile is not to the scale. So right. the ratio for vertical to uh, horizontal, uh, it's yeah. kind of like the point uh, seven point five. Yeah. So uh, I tried to, to make it at the one to one, and mm -hmm. uh, for the thrust uh, above uh, in, uh, the the thrust in the sediment, and also the normal flow, mm -hmm. the rifted the basement. The angle is almost uh, similar. Even the normal flow is uh, smaller. Uh, would you mind to give me the some uh, explanation? Why the, the normal flow have a lower angle? Hmm. Okay, um, it's a very good observations and thank you for the questions. Um, basically, I interpret the, um, for the cinder set, uh, cinder basins is basically on the seismic. So whenever I see there's a displacement of the fault, I interpret that as the normal fault. So um, I haven't really considered regarding um, the one-to-one -one ratio. And just like when you say, and we have the, uh, such a low angle dip for the normal faults. Um, let me think. Um, in some publications, some of this, um, which I did not include in my work, some of this um, normal fault basements, they, some of them, they connected to the decalment. Like there is not a decalment, the underplating, like, like below this area. Mm -hmm. 
And then, um, but but I couldn't say anything about that because um, from the seismic resolutions, it's quite low. So, and I I was my yeah, concern. Uh, I don't want to take too much time, so mm -hmm. I I like to do, uh, see the propose a, one of the possibility. Right. Uh, for the profile, you have uh, it uh, uh, perpendicular to the thrust flow axis, right? Right. But not necessary for loads the normal flow. So it could be possible it's because uh, the uh, deep angle for the normal flow, it's just apparent uh, angle, apparent deep ah, angle. apparent deep. Okay. Okay, that's the simple way to explain, okay, 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 explain okay. it. Okay. Right, right, right. Also, okay. Thank you. Uh, I also curious about those normal flow. Could mm -hmm. then it, uh, extend uh, even uh, down further because uh, I know it's uh, the uh, resolution is not good. Right. But the way you're showing it, 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 it seems to me it's terminated just like two or three uh, kilometer. <laughs> so, right, right. Uh, for the structure geology, this is. Right, right. Uh, uh, not easier to form. Those is normal will probably will extend even further. So one of the way the maybe that you put a question mark or it's uh, showing uh, no resolution right. or some way that uh, like that. Uh, I forgot to mention the for those um, uh, profile. Uh, and also some figure um, you didn't uh, uh, indicate the, the location back to the your uh, in, I mean the mentioned the, the three in your thesis. Uh, actually, you have an index map. It's a one point five, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you can add uh, like uh, uh. n and refer to figure one point five, that will be quite helpful for. The person okay, who's okay. read your uh, thesis. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, and first, more the uh, for your interpretation, why the thrust spacing, uh, it's uh, attributed to the pull pressure. Mm -hmm. Uh, could you explain the why the uh, actually, uh, I. Believe uh, if I understand it correct, uh, you interpret the uh, the one that you see the multi appear. Mm. Uh, that's the uh, pull pressure is a higher. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. So the mm -hmm. high pressure you in, interpret the high pull pressure the, that will be make the thrust spacing uh, spar less. Yeah. And the other one that will have a more dense. Why? Right. It's yeah. any uh, theory or any background? Yeah. <laughs> knowledge. So, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for the questions, Dr. Huang. So mm -hmm. basically, we assume that for the for the northern uh, lower slope because it is close to the shelf, and then mm -hmm. um, it may um, receive uh, less of uh, sedimentations. And so we have more erosion there, therefore the lower sedimentation rate there because it's closer to the shelf. And because of the uh, less um, sedimentation rate, we may have um, less um, fluid rich sediments deposited there, therefore uh, the lower pore pressure. And if we have the lower pore pressure, then we, will, we might to expect um, higher shear strength and therefore the narrower um, fault spacing as opposed to the southern part. So the distance between the northern part and the southern part is approximately about, um, let me think, maybe around like a hundred kilometers. Uh, so, I have a different, I don't want to take too much time. So right. I also want to propose another possibility to what I know about it. Oh, here you Something go. Something for the structure spacing or jointing, uh, king band or fault, uh, it's related to the confining pressure, mm -hmm. which it, it's quite a uh, message to me because uh, the depth, the uh, depth of the Tacoma uh, in one profile it's mm -hmm. five kilometer, and the other it's like the eight. So the thickness mm -hmm. for the sediment it's almost uh, the one third difference. Is that right? 
so the that means that like in the profile uh page 10 you have a must secret sediment okay so mm -hmm. that's uh, likely it's a, a mega thrust uh stop to act uh active so you okay. need to create uh, another one uh because you have you have a carry the uh have the higher uh, loading pressure, right? So it's not easy to uh, active. Uh, so you need to migrate it from. Right. So that's my interpretation. Right. I right. Can right. really relate it or understand the, why the high pressures uh, can make a spacing uh, dense or less. Right. Dense. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, Another thing that I'm curious, uh, actually the original you was uh, intended to, to do the balance correlation. That is true. <laughs> and I didn't see <laughs> anything uh, regarding to that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened? Uh, uh, many things happened along the way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, except for, for Professor yeah, because uh, you were not present in my qualification exams. So just a little um, brief, uh, you know, um, rewind. So in my qualification exams, I mentioned about these four topics, but for the chapter three, it's not about the stratigraphic development, more onto the balanced cross-section. So that was the proposal for my, um, you know, the whole dissertations. And then along the way, um, just as your um, uh, suggestions last time, and also that I found it, it's very difficult to create a balance sections if you don't have deep water drilling constraint. So especially um, you are assuming a, a, you know, a, a, a same thickness throughout the, the area. And then also you don't, you don't really know the exact dip. Of course, in here from the seismic data, you, you only see the apparent dip, just like what you said. Um, so I think it's a little bit um, far-fetched um, to, to um, execute that topic. And then the second reason is because, as I have mentioned before, chapter, uh, although it is it is organized as chapter two, three, four, five, um, from regional scale topic to local scale topic. However, um, in my project, I actually work on chapter four, five, two, and three. So chapter three is the last one. And being the last chapter, obviously I need to find um, a topic that has the common thread and also the similarity in terms of the, the whole topics. And for the balance sections, um, I found it difficult to, to find the common thread in the, in the, in the introduction part. So um, by that, my advisor and I, we decided to focus on the stratigraphic development instead by still using the output of chapter two. So it's not a waste. Um, and then um, hopefully maybe anyone in the future would like to incorporate my model as, as I interpreted here for future balance sections in the southwestern part of Taiwan, I will be more than happy. So that is the, um, the whole story of, uh, of my journey, Owen. <laughs> Owen, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I turned off the microphone. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh-oh. I think probably something wrong. No, I couldn't hear you. No, no. You <laughs> bet Okay. We, yeah, yeah. No. One yeah. more time, Owen. Okay, good. Hi. Oh. Yeah. Professor Huang, yeah, cannot hear you. We cannot. And even though it. he tried to uh you know, turn on the speaker, but still microphone, but still cannot hear. So probably something wrong with the with the devices or something. Yeah, he look out. He may come uh, look in again. Right. Okay. Yeah. See if he can log in very soon. Then he can continue. Otherwise, we may uh, switch to uh, Professor Ye first. Uh, yeah. Depend. So he 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 left the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He left. Okay. Okay, see if we could get in first. Yeah. So maybe I just feel the time. Okay. So from this uh this profile, it seems like for under the Gulping Canyon, uh the 
thickness of the lower strata change uh, dramatically. Mm. I mean, uh, so it's not constant thickness. Right. That's why uh, previous people put the new press in that area. But uh, no one knows if uh, it's a uh, model is correct or you know. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't hear you, Dr. Chi. Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we lose uh, Wu Cheng also. <laughs> Strong weight. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear so... me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Sorry. What I wanted to say is a uh, previous uh, work shows uh, possible duplex. Right. Uh, at the uh, in this area due to the raised basement high. Right. And uh, so, but by doing that, uh, the cross, the strata thickness will stay relatively constant. Right. But uh, but again, uh, just like you say, it's not easy to image those difference, and uh, it's uh, not clear. We don't have enough evidence to show if your model is correct or the previous model is correct. Right. So that's <laughs> the comment I want to make. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, all that, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thank you for your uh, statement, Dr. Chi. Yeah, that's something uh, Faisal uh, can uh, think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Professor Huang is back. Uh, can can uh, we hear him? Let me see. Uh, I think his, uh, mic his microphone is still turned off. So, maybe. Uh, uh, Maybe he can turn on his microphone, see if we can hear him. Owen, Owen's not oh. back. Oh, Owen's still not back yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, in this case, maybe uh, I'd like to ask uh, yes. Yixing, you know, Professor Ye to, uh, you know, yeah, just uh, to ask questions. Oh, yes, no problem. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, overall, uh, Faisal, you have done a very good job uh, in the uh, active margin, uh, northern yeah. margin system. Uh, in particular, particularly uh, to uh, pub publish papers, I think this is very good, and they will be uh, uh, broaden our knowledge on gas hydro potential on food and the thrust geological system, especially mm -hmm. in Taiwan. Okay. Um, uh, now I have to make some uh, comments. Uh, first of all, I think uh, the MCS sections in uh, chapter three generally is low resolution in PDF version. Yeah. So it's quite difficult to justify uh, which uh, uh, interpretation is correct or, or need to uh, modify. So I will suggest that you need to uh, increase your MCS section resolution. And also right. I think you can add some of the big core files as the uh, appendix uh, behind the whole uh, uh, dissertation, mm -hmm. it's easier that uh, people to uh, look through the uh, profiles. Uh, this is the uh, uh, suggestions. Okay. And then later, I have some uh, questions on the uh, data processing. Mm -hmm. Just uh, like uh, uh, Professor Wu uh, Zhen uh, mentioned about, I think your uh, processing, uh, data processing is quite conventional flow. Mm -hmm. but, uh, it seems like uh, some uh, over filtering to me, uh, maybe due to some uh, multiple because uh, you have performed three kinds of uh, the multiple technique mm -hmm. profile. Mm -hmm. So it will quite surprise to me uh, because this is the NGO profiles. Mm -hmm. I think some of places is quite difficult to image the uh, basement. Right. Even in the uh, uh, non static portion, like right. Your your nine your five ten this profile yeah quite strange because I I have also done this uh, uh profile processing in one of my papers right. so I think maybe you uh do uh, too hard on on uh, uh, uh the multiple techniques so you maybe yeah yeah you, you maybe there's uh, some space you need, you need to uh, uh uh deal with that I see and uh as and the uh, in the page. Uh, 40, mm -hmm. can you explain how to update your internal velocity by using the residual analysis? Because you are using the post uh, uh, stake 
that's my question, right? But right. it's not to say, right? right? Can you explain in detail how to do that? Yeah, so for this, um, for the interval velocity from the uh, stacking velocity, the way that I do it, because it isn't in the um, post-tech uh, domain, is yeah. that um, I didn't use the conventional um, like horizon-based or tomography-based um, at all. So in this case, I use a CVI constraint velocity inversions. And then, um, <laughs> so basically for uh, constraint velocity inversions, um, it is an extended version of Dick's equation. So basically, um, whatever uh, inputs or picking that we had from the second velocity, it will be inverted uh -huh. using the approach. Okay, so so you, you basically just uh, update the residual. Uh, right. Yeah, okay. Then uh, then uh, created the con constraint uh, velocity inversion. Right, right. Update that, okay. And uh, I think uh, uh, maybe you can add some, uh, and maybe you can overlay the seismic section and uh, your interval velocity. Okay. That will let people uh, easier to to think. Oh, oh, this is part of maybe a decomon uh, in your profile is quite clever. Right. It will easier. I see. To, yeah, to to justify it, easier to 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 look at. I see. Uh, so so that's why I, I will make some comments on the mm -hmm. I think page fifty five. Uh, uh, you, you can add the the seismic section as the background. Right. Yeah. And uh, later in the uh, uh, chapter three, uh, I think it's very good to uh, correlate the seismic stratigraphy uh, between the logs and the in your seismic section. Mm -hmm. But but I think this part of uh, uh, ocean uh, of this part is not good enough. Mm -hmm. You can uh, put some uh, real uh, dating a uh, log uh, in in your in, in this section. And I want to. I would like to see a, a, a real correlation between right. yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Island and the U.S. section is better. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, in the page uh, eighty, mm -hmm. uh, I, I I found this uh, interpretation is quite interesting. Uh, here's a question is about uh, how to form Pliocene sand inside an older mid Miocene late Miocene strata. I, I found that you, you put lots of uh, like a turbidi or sand uh, bodies, uh, many, many packages inside one's uh, seismic strata. And the least seismic strata in the background is older, but your, uh, your sand package is uh, younger. So it's, it's how to uh, create this kind of uh, 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 structures. And the why there are, yeah, why there are plenty of uh, group it browsing send a package and how to to insert that and uh, okay. it will create lots of uh, uh, isolated package i saw this uh, uh frequented in europe uh maybe it's the two uh, two profiles so page 80 is i believe it's this one the mcs uh, the mgl5 yeah okay so your question is in the pleistocene why do we have the depositions of the uh, turbulent sense within the Pliocene. Uh, 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 in deeper. Uh huh. Uh, you, you okay. Put the, yeah, see. Uh huh. Yeah, lots of uh, yellow package. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It should be a younger, but inside a uh, older uh, strata. Lots of uh, plenty of a uh, uh, small package. <clears throat> you mean the this paleo channel? Uh, this is a paleo channel. Yeah, it's a paleo channel. The yellow one, I, I mean the yellow one. The yellow one is the plies, uh, the pliocene. Pliocene. Yeah, pliocene. That's above. That's above it. Oh, above that. Yeah. Yeah, I think the question is uh, how how to form this kind of uh, a small package, uh, one by one, and uh, discontinuous, all the way in in the sand, uh, uh, strata. If I can, if I can understand your question correctly, you were asking about the Pliocene sediments, right? Yeah. Not, yeah. not the Miocene sediment, right? Uh, the background, the background should be older, right? Mid to the, the is that correct? It's the same. I didn't distinguish the background with the um, facies, so it's the same age basically. Okay. Yeah. But uh, maybe I I don't know if I'm uh, correct or not. Maybe because the yellow one is a Pliocene. The yellow one is Pliocene, right? Uh, 
the small package inside the, the boxy. Uh huh. Yeah, lower than boxy. There are still some the small. Uh, I think a, a sandy package inside the last last strata. You mean this one? Yeah, uh, lower, lower. Lower this one. Another one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that is harps. Um, it is possibly due to the overbanking sediments. Oh, so you you think that's a all of it, that is the overbanking sediments? Not all of them because they are distributed. They are distributed as sparsely, not continuous. So I didn't continue all of my harps um, symbols here. Okay. Okay. Now I understand Professor Ye's questions uh, because like uh, yeah, the harp using yellow color. Mm -hmm. In the yellow color in your legend is your pliocene. Yeah. So ah. that may indicate that pliocene <laughs> hub oh. inside the myocene. Okay. Oh, I see. I okay. see. Yeah, you oh. were confusing me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I get it. Okay. <laughs> okay. In this case, you, you need to change that. Change the it. color. All right. Cool. Yeah, I will. Thank you so much for your um good eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also. Uh, I noticed that in the, your uh, youngest uh, section, uh, in Box B, there's uh -huh. many, many uh, turbidity package. Right. Uh, one by one, uh, how to form these kind of uh, structures? Uh, in my mind, uh, maybe I'm, I'm not correct. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, turbidity current or uh, MTD, it was slumping. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, one stumping is the older like this one. Right. Another new one is, will be overlap on right. top. But uh, you will, NDD looks like uh, um, every NDD is uh, aligned <laughs> the same uh, <laughs> altitude. <laughs> right. How to uh, form this kind of structures and mm. just disregard it. Yeah, um, very nice thought. Actually, um, this is just a generalized concept that uh -huh. um, in this area, in this unit, we have the majorly, for example, MTD or sediment waves. So uh -huh. I did not um, consider about the directions as well, especially this is uh, 2D lines. Uh -huh. So um, when you say that, uh, I admit that this, um, I just simply flip this MTD with this one just to make it like different. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, some uh, simple to say this. Right, so right, yeah. So uh, I did I did not consider about um, the directions of the paleo MTD here. So it's just this is just a generalized concept of the seismic facies distribution. All right. Oh, I, okay. But yeah. uh, it's better to uh, uh, identify uh, in the uh, detailed structure over there. It will be very interesting. Yeah, there will be another topic for that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, page eighty-four. 84 is okay. Yeah, you mark it. Uh, there's a spray fort over there, right? Wait. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, can you specify a, spray, a spray fort on MCS profile? Can you characterize or uh, just uh, say uh, which one is spray fort and how to form the spray fort? Yeah, so in the MGL 27s that I reprocessed, um, I assume there is, a, we, we, uh, I observed the presence of the reverse polarity um, at this area and this area. Uh -huh. So basically I assume that is a fluid rich um, major faults. And I assume that is the display faults just because it is out of sequence um, uh -huh. in terms of the, um, the strike and the dip compared to the um, uh, un uh, unsequence uh, thrusting. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, there is also um, a displacement, um, like a small displacement. I drew it here uh, of the uh, modern space fault mm -hmm. and basically marks uh, the separations of the paleo um, mm -hmm. uh, seafloor from the older seafloor with the modern one, the mm -hmm. modern seafloor. Okay. So basically, you mark the thrust fall in between the lower slope and the upper slope to say that one should be the spray fall. Uh, presumably. Yeah. Okay. But I think uh, in the, your close up figure, it's quite weird. You mark it to a, a thrust for one, one in deeper, mm -hmm. just to stop it mm. in, uh, a folding. 
uh, area and another one just cuts through the, the surface. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's quite uh, strange to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the uh, definition of a spray fold, it's, uh, it's quite similar like an out of sequence fold. Right. So that represents your that fold is a giant, giant ticket and the, and the a spray from a uh, uh, printer face. Right. Directed up to the surface and the castle, many, many uh, uh, sequences. Right. But uh, in this, may, maybe maybe this is imaging problems. You, you couldn't see anything, mm -hmm. but the uh, upper slope area. Mm -hmm. but, but this is unlikely a uh, uh, typical uh, feature of a spray for to me, just to me. I see. Yeah. But that still can, we still can uh, discuss. I see. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your inputs. But, 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 that, but this definitely is a, a, a big a, a source flow. There's no mm -hmm. problem. Right, right. Thank you. Okay. So since this is the PhD, PhD uh, dissertation, I, can, I need to uh, ask you a, a question about the, I think, uh, what is the, you can raise uh, several points or one point. What is the, your major contribution uh, in this area and in, in your topic? And uh, what is the next important work I think you need to uh, further uh, performing in the future? Right. So I guess in general speaking, um, with these four chapters, um, as you can tell, I'm focusing on two different topics, the yeah. stratigraphy study and as, as well as the um, guest letter study. In terms of the stratigraphy study, because there are limited um, studies regarding about the uh, tectonic and the stratigraphic development, especially in the um, uh, frontal frost belts, the submarine frontal frost belts. I guess my work uh, contributes to that part. Um, so far, many publications have been discussing about the uh, stratigraphy and this tectonic development um, to the west of the deformation front, and they are still discussing and still in a time domain. However, in my um, work, I'm working it in a, in a depth domain. So at least now, instead of saying that, okay, the decalment is around like six seconds. So I can hint um, like a definite uh, depth um, in my work. And then, so that is a major contributions, I believe for the society, for the scientific um, geological society in Taiwan. And then for the gas hydrates, um, one of the major um, work that I'm working here is um, the volumetric estimations. And um, which I believe, um, actually, when I when I wrote the chapter four and I published the um, the the paper, um, I haven't seen um, much of the published um, papers uh, discussing about the gas hydro systems as well as the volumetric calculations in the southwestern of Taiwan. Uh, most of them are published only as a thesis or dissertations, but not in a journal. So I guess um, by um, having my work, especially in chapter four, it will shed a light regarding um, the petroleum um, prospects in terms of uh, gas hydrates in southwestern offshore Taiwan. Okay. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. No more question. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank Yichun. you. Yeah. So now I see uh, Professor Huang <laughs> is the back, Owen. So uh, maybe that... you can continue your question or <laughs> comments. Yeah. Still, I, I don't know. I, I still cannot hear. How about oh, others? I can't hear you. So maybe Owen can come to my office. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot hear you. Or you, or you can type. That might be a good idea. You guys can wear a mask and stay in the <laughs> same room. <laughs> wear a mask. <laughs> wear a mask. Or you can type if you want. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Type on this. It all just depends. Yeah. Looks like his microphone has some problem or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now. Oh yeah, sure. Hey, good. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's working. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, sorry for my this uh, disappearance is uh, due to the unstable internet of, of our institute. Uh, currently, we wanted <laughs> to replace uh, the switch is uh, for the internet. Uh, so, mm -hmm. but I haven't uh, finished it yet. Oh, okay. So, I have uh, two further question. Mm -hmm. uh, one um, in your, uh, uh, I think the 
schematic uh, chrono uh, chronostrophic column right. we show uh, a barrier uh, cement, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So what's the lithology of the barrier cement? Uh, the lithology will be igneous rocks. Okay, uh, would you mind to go to? Oh, yeah, you already show here. Yeah. So uh, there is a three cements uh, you show uh, in it, uh, and one is on top of uh, I think the basement. I have uh, no problem. And right. the other two is uh, embedded in the sediment. Or oh, what right. happened to the loot of this? Uh, uh, root. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's going on? How how you interpret it? Yeah, so um, don't forget that this is chronostratigraphy. So basically, um, this is just showing uh, the development of the um, stratigraphy as well as the tectonics through time. So I'm not saying that there is no root here. So this is not like suddenly you have a buried seamount. No, of course, the buried seamount is connected somewhere. But I'm just talking about uh, the development of the buried seamounts happens since early Oligocene to early Miocene. Okay, but it does it does really not make sense for the channel. It's fine. Uh, you're showing a top that uh, the one in orange, view, right? Right. So that's it's it impacted in the other sediment, but right. uh, this very <laughs> mountain it's just part of layer. It's a part of me, but okay. <laughs> I let you uh, to discuss it with uh, your advisor. Is that make sense to you? Okay. Okay. Yeah, may, may, may I comment on this, the C mount? Yeah. Yes. That's because that is a chronostratigraphic diagram. Mm -hmm. So the vertical axis is time. So that means that, for example, that at the boundary of the oligos in the Miocene, we have C mount here. So that indicating the volcanic eruptions occurred during this stage. Mm -hmm. okay. Because this is not depth sections. So we cannot draw the seamount all the way down to the basement. If oh. we draw all the way down to the basement, indicating the eruption continues from around 30 to 23. But oh, I see. That, I see. that is not what we mean. We mean oh, that okay. Okay, during only 23, we have a volcanic uh, eruptions. OK, I understand now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Uh, one more, it's, uh, I'd like to point out, uh, probably you already made a correction in your dissertation. Mm -hmm. the figure 1.1, the first figure, you made a mistake. I hope that it's not going to uh, uh, appear in your last version. So <laughs> that's the, you have uh, the Y square. And actually, the, this is the blue square, right? So the go. Please go back to check out your dissertation. Make sure it's correct because it's the first figure and you, the caption that you make a mistake. You say it's a white square. Oh, yeah. It's supposed okay. to be blue square, right? <laughs> okay. Since it's the first figure, so I think it's important. All right. Keep on the back impression. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that's it. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Huang. Great, yeah, You're thank welcome. you very much. Yeah, indeed. All right, so Andrew, it's your turn. My turn? Oh, I think uh, we, I already have fully discussed with uh, Faisal <laughs> two times for many years. <laughs> okay. I, I don't have questions, thank you. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay, then uh, I, uh, I will make uh, some comments and uh, maybe uh, instead of real questions, but uh, suggestions, First is when I read uh, uh, the thesis, you know, facial thesis, I think it's uh, very well written. You know, I like your uh, English style and everything. So I read it uh, very smoothly, comfortably. And I can uh, think that uh, it's uh, well organized and also the logic of things are, are quite clear. Okay, that's very nice. But I think uh, so when I read, uh, you know, the abstract, I think, uh, I, you know, many you may consider to uh, uh, rewrite or modify your abstract and right. also conclusions. Yeah, because this this uh, problem occurs in many uh, many theses. Yeah, basically, uh, you have to know what's abstract, the purpose of abstract, and what's conclusion. 
And they are, and uh, in many, 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 uh, very frequently that students just uh, cut and paste, you know, yeah, one paragraph, so they both appear in both abstracts and conclusions, which is fine. But for abstract, uh, basically you want to tell the readers what are the main story, you know, yeah, for, 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 for your thesis. So it will be a very concise, uh, you know, yeah, it's, uh, you can, tell people the significance of your study and right. how you did it and what's the major things, uh, what's the major achievements of that, you know, right. yeah. But for, for conclusion, then many just to tell the major findings of, of, of your research and including, you know, your contribution and things, you know, yeah. So, uh, so I, I think uh, conclusion is probably fine, but abstract, I think you put the many, very detailed thing. Yeah, for example, when you mention about uh, different, uh, uh, identify different layers, uh, six right. layers, 11 uh, faces or something, right. you can mention that, but you don't need to give all the 11 things. When I read it, especially uh, abstract, it's the first thing people read. You list out 11 faces. Uh, I don't think anybody will have a, an idea about uh, what those things talk talking about, you know? So, so right. you can try, uh, try to, um, uh, I mean, reduce the uh, the words in the abstract. Try to make it simple and short, shorter, and then uh, get to the get to the point. Yeah. Right. And then uh, I think for your thesis, uh, like I said, it's uh, well written, uh, but occasionally I found uh, a few places which, uh, compared to many other theses I've uh, read. Uh, I, I read before then uh, the uh, typo arrows is uh, really a minimum, but but occasionally I, I, I do uh, catch a few. So I suggest that maybe you can have um, another person try to uh, proofread for you, you know, because, right. you know, usually, uh, even though you read it many times, uh, some something you just couldn't catch, you know, right. uh, many uh, there are some duplicate words or something, you know, probably during editing or something. Yeah, it just uh, needs to clean up something. Yeah. Okay, right. so those are general thing about your uh, thesis. And then uh, I think uh, uh, your thesis, uh, of course, the chapter four, chapter five uh, are already published uh, in the papers. And even though some comments, uh, suggestions made by the committee members concern that, it's, uh, which is, uh, is good, you know, maybe you can consider if you have a chance yeah. to do a further uh, study. For reprocessing uh, work, and uh, it's been submitted. Uh, but I think uh, you know, especially when uh, 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 Yichin mentioned that uh, it's a uh, because for length of data, pre-stack depth migration is doable. You know, it's really mm -hmm. a good opportunity. Uh, of course, maybe your uh, your research itself is not uh, focused on the uh, reprocessing, but if you can. You know, if you have a chance to uh, to to continue study here after your uh, your PhD degree, then I would say you know uh, reprocess the profiles using pre-stack uh, depth migration definitely would help. You know, right. even though this has been done, you know, yeah, by uh, even in my group we have a reprocess at least one of the uh, profile which shows very uh, very nice images. And Yiching, uh, Professor Ye has, uh, has done that as well. You know, what I mentioned this is because uh, I think uh, you showed four profiles, you know, two on the passive uh, South China Sea kind of margin, the other two, you know, running from deep sea basin to the uh, accretion wedge are really very nice. And when I saw this map and when, when you describe the stratigraphy, the structural variations, I begin to think because uh, when you mention that, even though you try to interpret date, your uh, uh, strata, you know, the stratigraphy uh, and based on uh, basis analysis and things. And uh, I think you, I, I didn't see a figure to show, you know, the line tie uh, because you, you, you should be able to tie from one line to the other. And also, mm -hmm. you know, for those four lines, there are at least the three tie points. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, what I mm -hmm. mentioned this is because I think this four lines lay on a very uh, key position because the two profiles, uh, which, uh, you know, Northeast, Southwest uh, trending profile, which run 
you know, into the Crescent Wedge actually uh, run into different um, province of the Crescent Wedge. One right. is uh, many just uh, many lower slope, but uh, the, the lower slope, but it's uh, it's all on a, a, a more uh, active collision in that way. The other one uh, in the south of Taiwan, the line 27 is, you know, it shows from from deep sea basin to lower slope to upper slope, you know, yeah, it's something. Mm -hmm. And then it ties to the uh, passive margin thing. And then the uh, two lines also the um, along the passive margin also running across the Formosa Canyon, right. you know, which has been suggested, uh, you know, by Professor Xu, uh, Su Kun Xu and others, uh, that could be a major structural or even tectonic boundary or something. So right. I think if you, when you look at those things, I don't know if you, uh, of course, you know, in your present uh, present thesis, uh, you know, yeah, you try to identify those uh, stratas and try to correlate and try to get the uh, kind of uh, age constraint. But when you begin to write uh, them into a manuscript, you may try to see the difference, you know, the thickness, the structural style or something, and then try to show whether they, you know, some of those profiles running across major structural or tectonic boundary. Of course, uh, yeah, out of thickness trust is something we already know, but there are also maybe some other things. Yeah, so so this is just the just the suggestion. Yeah, because right. when I see your interpretation, I think, wow, that's very nice, you know, yeah, because usually when I, I used to look at only passive margin profiles or Accretion and wedge profiles, and right. suddenly I see, wow, you know, you, you may be able to tie all those together, which will be very nice. And also, it's one of your objectives for your for, for, for your chapter three. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is something uh, you may uh, think about. Yeah. And then uh, uh, balance cross section is another thing. When I read your thesis, it came to my uh, mind. But of course, uh, you have already uh, responded to that question. And but without balance procession, so when you when I saw your interpretation on the uh, you know different strata and right. uh, for example Pliocene strata or something, mm -hmm. then in the passive margin side, you know before the line run across the Mariana Trench, then yeah that's fine, it's continuous, very nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Once you uh, to the east of the uh, Mariana Trench, then fold and thrust the belt appeared, and then uh, you interpreted uh, those. Uh, uh, Basically, just the uh, interpretation, the how sure, how confidence we have on the interpretation of different uh, assigned different uh, age to the uh, to the strata or something, you know, right. yeah. Without balance perception, then usually it's a uh, uh, you know at least I have a doubt. So this is something also when you begin to, if you want to write that into publication, yeah, this is something you need to think about. You know, you need to need to convince uh, your readers that your interpretation is correct. Yeah, it's the, uh, and also regarding the out of the, uh, the, the split four things, you know, I have same uh, uh, feeling with uh, with Yiching that you have two, two parallel, uh, you know, yeah, split four. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the top one, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I could even see some indications on the seismic image, so I think that that should be fine. But second one is really strange. I don't know, you know, yeah, it's uh, whether that this is also something for you. If you put those uh, interpretation into a, a manuscript, that will be openly reviewed, or criticized, or something. Then those are something maybe you need to think more before you, uh, you know, put down your interpretation. Okay. Yeah. Right. So. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like I'm giving comments instead of real questions. Let's see if uh, uh, I think I, I do have. Uh... Okay, yeah. I think some, some questions are uh, already being at, raised by other members and being asked and something you know yeah, just to say regarding uh, maybe you can uh, respond a little bit about uh, when you do uh, in your chapter three when you do interpretation mm. did you actually perform the uh, the line tie you know try to uh, 
tie your interpretation from one profile to the other and then from passive margin all the way to uh, a crescendo wedge. Now, yes. Could you uh, comment yeah. on that? Yeah, um, definitely. I did the seismic to seismic tie. So by using uh, the work of the out at all, I, um, I type from the MGL5 first. So let me show uh -huh. you the base map. Yeah. I type from MGL5 first, and then next I tie to the MGL10. Okay. I tie uh -huh. to MGL20, and then I tie it to MGL27. Okay, so you did. Yeah, yeah but did. you didn't show those uh, in the uh, right. Yeah, right. In, in your thesis. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. All right, so I don't have other questions or comments or then uh, go back to the uh, committee members, uh, see if there are further questions or comments to face so. Yeah, Wu Jian, do you have uh, further questions or comments? Yes, uh, I think overall uh, face so did a good job and uh, we as, uh, as scientists, some. Um, Sometimes we do quantitative work. Sometimes we do description and interpretation. And uh, it's it's a art to make the boundary between your result and your <laughs> interpretation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so uh, that part, I think uh, you can improve uh, next time when you do your new project. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second comment I have is uh, just like uh, many professors ask uh, your contribution, then uh, you need to uh, build a fence around your your contribution, saying that uh, make it very clear why your results are different from previous or others' results. Then uh, think of every uh, many ways that people will uh, or argue against your idea and uh, mm -hmm. reply to them. So mm -hmm. this way, by doing this way, then I think uh, because your English is already very good. And uh, if you can incorporate this kind of concept, I think uh, your publication and uh, research uh, career will be uh, much more smoother, smoother compared with other people. So those are the two of my major comments. Thanks. Thank you, Professor Chi. Yeah. Okay, Owen, yeah, you have a further uh, question, comment? Okay. Um, just take a look at one more time for the uh, uh, cross session uh, in the day 27. Uh, 27. Um, because you don't, you didn't do the parents cross session. So mm. I'm wonder, because I know this is not scaled, but mm. uh, if we take a look at the current version uh, for the detection man in the Western, uh, in the, uh, I think it's in our right side. So there is a slope. Okay, sorry, uh, the figure the, in the lab and the button, mm -hmm. button mm -hmm. lab. Mm -hmm. So you see that there is a slope, you put it for a decoma. Right. Right. Uh, I just wonder uh, that's, Telling me the, the thickness uh, for those stress bell. If you, you put it back and restore it, mm -hmm. and the thickness will be quite huge different. Is that right? Yeah. So because you have uh, the slope, so you might uh, want to think about uh, seeing further to see will that cause the trouble if uh, uh, you want to convince uh, people if the your cross section, the structure is correct. Or the simply the see the metal slope, it's more gentle. So you won't have the thickness of the problem. But mm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, but since it's not the, uh, uh, to scale, so I wonder is how much different it will make. So, well. I have no further question. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. okay. Thank you, Owen. Yeah. So, Yi Ching, yeah, you have any uh, further question or comments? Uh, no more. Okay. Then I think uh, Andrew probably still no comments or already done. <laughs> okay. So, for, for yeah. So, okay. 
for this uh, depth sections, uh, in, initially I would like to have a uh, to do the balance cross sections yeah. and to study the shortening rate of the, the thrust belt. That's quite important. But because uh, we don't have, like uh, Faisal said, we don't have a uh, good edge constraints for the, the, the rocks. So we, uh, that is just our interpretations. And for the decorament, for the 27 lines, mm -hmm. the decorament is from Chiu Xin, who did the same sections here, 20, 27, by using OBS data. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So in, in these steps, around 20, 12 kilometers near the, uh, the boundary of the lower slope and the upper slope, she, uh, her conclusion is that it's around, around 12 kilometers. So okay. yeah, so for this, we, so we based on the decrement from her study, but above the de decrement, that's a real problem. You see, we have a very thick, very thick pile of sediments and it's just a really, uh, is there any duplex or just a simple folding and thrusting? We don't know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. That's been maybe the next, next possible target for our study. I think that's a good, good question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's my comment. Okay, thank you. Okay. I don't have other questions. Okay, so uh, I don't have any other uh, comments or questions either. So if uh, all the committee members are uh, satisfied with the uh, question uh, wrong, then uh, I think I would like to ask, uh, you know, Faisal and other uh, non-committee uh, members to uh, get off the line, right? <laughs> so okay. uh, we will have uh, internal discussion among our uh, committee members. Yeah. All right. So should I leave now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, Faisal, you 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 should leave as okay. well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So only committee members will stay online. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, oh, I'm going to everyone is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we just uh, discussed about uh, uh, the final final stage. Yeah, try to grade the uh, exam and things. Uh, we can speak Chinese, right? Yes, yes, yes. We are still recording, no? We are still recording. Yeah, recording, no problem. Yeah, anyway, his presentation is like this. 就是说哈，关于这个学位考试，那么呃，我想就是当然最简单的就是大家打一个分数。不过在那个之前，就是有没有什么需要讨论的？那个 Andrew 有没有什么什么呃，哦，呃 ，inside information inside. You know, or whatever， 哦<笑>、okay. ，或或或者你需要 comment 说明的或者怎么样？好，我来说明一下哈。这个 Faisal 他来这一边，他是那个印尼最好的大学 ，Master。我忘记那个名称了哈，毕业就像我们台湾的台大大学部，那来这一边 T I G P 是念博班，那 T I G P 的时候，我们就要从又又所以又念的从硕士嘛哈，从念所以他总共念了八年，哦，念了八年，那、okay, yeah, 他来之前的话，在 e x o m o b i l e 待过五年，就大学毕业以后就去 e x o m o b i l e 在美国，在那边在那边做事做了几年，啊，他爸爸是外交官。他爸爸在外交官是那一个他们印尼驻美国大使的武官呐、啊，武官哎，啊他爸爸也是他呃八月二号过世嘛，对对对，突然过世是骑脚踏车突然心脏病病发，这样子过世的，啊他爸爸七十几岁他也蛮难过的，那因为他在这个求学的八年的过程当中，他是一个非常独立的学生，哦独立的学生，然后非常的。像我们这些题目啊，我大概只给他一个大方向，然后他很快的就可以把它那个弄出来，哦，比如说他政策剖面最后他最后处理的这两条剖面是最后来处理出来的，哦，那因为我也不是政策处理专家嘛，那他原本是找陈浩伟老师的，<笑>那陈老师比较比较呃 critical OK， 那他们两个甚至到最后有一点小小的冲突。<笑>也不叫冲突，就是有点那一个，啊，我也不会指导他，那、啊、所以他等于是这个 processing 都是他到最后自己这样子摸出来的，哦，所以你可以觉得说他的他他是很有做研究的这个能力，啊啊，好
啊，他做出来以后，他要把这做这个政策解释，啊，那我只跟他讲说，哦，大概就这个那个，哎，他最后自己也搞出了一个这个东西呀、啊，哎，所以你可以看到说他有这一个，他的确是很有研究潜能，然后也有，那我本来想说他发表了一两篇 paper， 那早赶快可以早点毕业，然后他就还蛮执着的，哦，只要把他这个弄完，好，所以就是他有很执着，你可以从他的那个。论文的在呃前面的感谢可以看到说啊，当是个修道士的，哎这样子，然后然后又加上他到时候没有放弃，哦，他因为他是蛮独立，他有一个小小的缺点，就是不太，他不是那种一直要扒着指导教授的啦，就给他一个方向了以后，他就自己做自己做，然后到就做出来，啊，所以他会觉得很孤独，他所以他觉得可能研究。研究了，但生活当中蛮孤独的哈，啊，但是他也，他有很多的朋友啦。我说在研究的部分，他是蛮执着、蛮孤独的。他是一个可以成为一个一个很好的研究学者未来。好，啊，他现在下一个步骤，其实他是说，印尼的大学那个大学啊，一直要他回去当教职啊，啊，但是他一直不太想回去印尼。<笑>啊，但是因为他爸爸过世了以后，他可能有一些另外一个想法，另外一个改变，哎，所以也可能会回去。当然，李伟他现在是先想说在国外，所以他现在申请 James Tech， 想去 James Tech 继续做研究。然后他说他不太想教书了，哦，他可能想做 researcher。那我觉得他未来是蛮有 potential 的，可以成为一个很好的一个 independent 的 researcher。这是我的卡面，他是一个好学生，蛮独立积极的。大概是我这个所教过的博士生当中最好的。呀，我记得他那一个呀，因为他一开始做论文的时候，尤其是 Lower Fanlao Basin 那边呀，所以所以那个，因为我们也做过那边边 data 也是我们这边过去的，所以那个时候呀，跟他那个交流还蛮多的，你知道？那个时候我还记得，哎，他去参加哪一个国际会议吧，也是表现的非常好，你知道，非常 impressive， 呀呀呀。对对对。那其实当然后来呀，所以所以他重新 reprocessing 跟那一个到最后做到那个解释的时候，其实你一般的硕士论文光是就是 combine 第二章第三章大概做一个 PhD thesis 都很够的，你知道吧？当然这个是他后来这样子能够来做了，也不错了，看他有没有机会继续。就是说，当然，如果说他毕了业离开台湾以后，就不见得会碰这些东西了。不过如果要的话呀，其实真的还是还还还蛮很多，还蛮有很多东西可以做的，很好。呀，嗯，对。OK， 呀，那其他的 committee member 对于他有没有什么其他的 comment 或者怎么样？嗯，如果没有的话，我想接下来就是大家就是打一个分数哈，因为。正式的那个，当然那个林老师的信都给大家，所以我想你们每人大概都有这个正式的表格，到时候填一填。那今天我要统计分数的话，我的建议就是说，你们可以呀 ，email 那个马上丢个 email 给我，或者是怎么样，大概就多少，只只要只要写一个分数就行了。那我到时候的话就把大家的分数平均一下，然后正式的就把它写在这个报告。对于对于这个。论文的 title 其实我当初还蛮担心的，我就是说，因为他所有东西都已经打印出来了，万一有问题的话，那个要改还挺麻烦的。不过我看了一下，我觉得还好，我不知道有没有人对于他的论文 title 有问题的。如果都没有的话，当然基本上就这样子，就这样写了呀。嗯，所以表格好像是那个，每一个 committee member 自己要写吗？没，呃，我们印地所这边的话是也要交给所办，我不知道地科系那边要不要交。这一张的话可以交给，要交给所办电子档。对对对，电子档也可以，要交。电子档也可以。哎，对。OK， 不过反正像现在就是那一个大家。大家反正就是分数给了我之后，所以你们基本上分数就是一百分的那一种嘛。然后我把它加在一起平均一下，所以到小数点第二位，对不对？对然后在成绩单上写的就是写这个阿拉伯数字嘛，对不对？对写阿拉伯数字就可以了。OK， 好。呀，然后我就开始签签了之后，然后到最后我把这一个正本签了的正本，还有加上其他需要签了的正本，到时候寄回去给给林建顺老师呀。对，那么其他的人如果需要在正本上签的，就可以到时候签，或者说接受电子档的话也可以。OK， 
。好吧，那就是这样子。那请大家把那,那我提醒一下，签名的时候，刘老师你要签这个 convener 的。对对对，我我也注意到呀 ，convener 我会签上面呀 ，convener。其他人的电子，如果是电子档的话，就签在第一排第一个格子。因为到时候这个每一个人就付上去， okay. 那如果像，呃，我，呃，刘老师寄回来给我的话，那我跟，呃，文正就签在下面这里，那如果是戚老师跟叶老师的话，就另外两张放在后面。哦、oh, ，OK， 了解、哦，是这样子的。呀、yeah, ，所以就是说你们不见得需要亲签，就就就是在同一张纸头上。呀、yeah, ，对。那这张也是一样， okay. 这一张戚老师跟叶老师。你们就签在这个就可以了。第一个哦，好，啊，然后分数不用打，哦，因为到时候也是你们那个两张就会附在后面。OK，OK，、okay. okay, 现在已经有老师的分数过来了，所以请其他的人那一个呀。那我的分数直接给李老师看哦。对呀、啊，可以呀、啊，<笑><笑>就这样子。介意的话，对。呀、yeah, ，好，谢谢。这个分数大家以后都会知道。<笑>对对对对对，反正就是，或者你你不你你不用邮寄，你也可以用 Note 呀、yeah, ，就是那个上面好像对对对好像有 Note， 哎，那 Note 到哪去了？你看看。Note。开会的时候呀。哎，刘老师看到吗？黄老师。Note，、呃、我我原来有奇怪，我现在 Note 都不知道跑哪去了。OK， 吴倩看到了呀。Yeah. 好，现在黄老师的那个黄老师刚,刚没看到，哎，黄老师这边，黄老师的还没有，再再远离一点点，因为有点聚焦不太好。黄老师的，哎，黄老师的九十二票，好像是九十二。那一个，哦哦哦，哇，这个这个，黄老师讲话看看会不会。换成大荧幕，我我这样子看不到，我的老眼昏花。用讲话的也可以啊。呀呀呀！请他用那个用 Messenger 就太用 Messenger 就。对啊对啊对啊。用 Chat 也可以。那个是在哪里？我刚刚有出现那一个，就是。哎，他这个上面 OK， 行，看到了呀，很好，好，谢谢，哇哦，几乎那个好好呀，好，平均分数 91.8。呀、yeah, ，九十一，所以我到时候就写在那边呀。Yeah, 九十一点八零，对对对，呀，九十一点八零，对，九十一点八零，所以几乎就是九十二分呀， yeah, 非常好呀， yeah, 就是表现很好，也恭喜恭喜他呀。Yeah, 那这样子来讲的话，我们这边就是大家反正把该填的填好，该该记的记好就可以了吧？那其他还有什么特别的事吗？交还给我们林老师。那我要邀请他进来，我们跟他。哦，对对对对对，大家在一起恭喜他，所以再开一张。我去邀请他进来一下。呀，跟他说高分高分。那这个在台大来讲的话，就是上九十分就是 A plus， 呀 A plus 这个非常好，非常好的成绩。所以他在美国待过，难怪英文也很好，整个 presentation style 什么各方面都非常好。不过其实一那个一庆也在那边，就是政策资料处理那地方。其实我当初有跟他讲，他可以过来跟我们 Reef 聊一聊的。不过他可能就是做他做他的那个，一开始可能有一个，后后来也比较比较没有那个，所以他自己做做的话，当然在这一方面可能，如果真的要好好的做的话，可能需要再花一点功夫啊。不过他请教你就好了、啊，怎么会请教呢？陈浩伟会觉得这个陈浩伟是理论的。他要发在哪个新的 module 可以跟他去讨论？真正 processing 的话，对不对？<笑>啊，当然是那个叶老师。发在当然是刘老师最好了。没有没有没有没有，他到我这边来还是比较不方便的呀。其实我现在功力已经大退了，现在很多东西都不会做，都是看他们年轻人在那边做，你知道呀？好，他要加进来了。OK 呀、yeah. 嗯。
，大家辛苦了，感谢嘞。没有没有问题啊，我我发觉这个视讯现在真的<笑>真的很好。呀、yeah, ，就是包括无线，甚至在山上都可以参加。山上都可以。对啊，我也吓一跳，居然可以在山上做。呀呀呀！唯一可惜的是在海上没有办法，因为那个平宽实在是太差了，你知道吗？是啊，是啊。要不然的话，你知道，真的是无远佛界，太好了呀！甚至出国以后，出国都可以参加了，对不对？呀呀呀！有搞不好在太空做什么？嗨，黑手，哦，嗨 ，Yeah， congratulation， very good， 不要打 ，Thank you so much， job， excellent job， yeah， 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 Thank you so much， all of the community members， yeah， 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 so now you can relax a little bit and then then try to wrap up your、uh, your final final version of your thesis， yeah， right， yeah， we will leave that to your、uh, supervisor， Professor Lin，、uh, make sure that、uh, You know, you did a good job on on finalizing your thesis. Yeah, right. Okay, Owen, out of order again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. How,、oh. Andrew? Any? So, congratulations to、uh, Doctor Dagantara. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> congratulations. It, it feels. Um, it feels surreal. Um, finally able to finish this study. Um, and I really, um, grateful for your opportunity becoming my committee member. I learned a lot from all of you. Thank you so much. Great, great, great. Can we take a group photo? Sure. Yeah, sure. This <laughs> time more relaxed for Professor. <laughs> okay. Professor Chi has the best background. To be honest, I'm so jealous. Yeah, very jealous. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, take it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you、Good. so much. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.、Okay. Enjoy. Relax. You know. <laughs> thank you so much. Day, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye、okay. bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Yeah.